Yeah, so dig out your chapter eight <laughs> notes. We did not finish them. We still have one more section. It's about the activity series. What was the first section? Chemical, t the oh, balancing, the balancing of chemical yeah. reactions. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like two things to write down. It's awesome. Yeah, yeah it's a really short uh, lesson here. Big lab. Okay, so I'm just going to restate what I said earlier. We're taking notes today. We are doing the lab today. Um, and you do have an assignment, but you get tomorrow and Friday if you're here to like get it done. Sorry, FCCLA. But at least you'll have all the data. It's, it's, it's just those two. Okay, but at least you have all, all the data. So. Okay, so today's learning objectives talk about an activity series and how we use, to, use it to predict whether or not a chemical reaction will take place. So the definition of an activity series is basically there's this list of elements and it ranks how reactive they are. Where it is on the list, top versus bottom, um, will help us predict whether or not a single replacement reaction will occur. So a more reactive element will replace another element in a compound that is less reactive than it. If the element's lower than the other um, element, then no reaction will occur. So that's why sometimes when you mix things together and nothing happens, it might be because the element that you know you mix or you put into it is lower on this reactivity list um, so nothing happens but if something does happen well, no, you know yeah so I'm going to show you how this works I'm going to use a really sexist analogy, <laughs> but you know what? This is how my chemistry teacher taught it, and it sticks with me today, so I'm just going to teach it to you. Yeah, I know, and I'm videotaping this, so I'm probably going to lose my job now, right? <laughs> okay, so let's just put this, let's just, you know, we talked about single replacement reactions, right? So we have a compound here, A paired up with X, and then B by itself. And if you add B to the mix and B swap places, now B is with X, right? So we talked about single replacement where one is swapping. Um, so the best analogy is to consider A and X as dancing partners. Remember Fred Flintstone, you know, Fred with Wilma. Um, suppose A is dancing with X and B sees the couple enjoying themselves. B is not dancing with anyone. B is jealous, okay? cuts in um, and now A is all alone and B is having fun dancing with X so obviously this is a very sexist version but under what conditions could B cut in in real life yeah maybe B is gonna beat up A maybe B is like B A right I mean maybe this person is like looks terrifying super strong I don't know right Right, I, I mean, I'm videotaped, so I can't, yeah, I'm just, okay, cool. So if B is um, a snotty-nosed brat, he probably won't be able to cut in, right? But if B's the biggest, baddest bully on the campus, he's gonna have his way. Um, so this activity series, you know, separates your bullies from your brats. What if B actually wants to dance with A, then what? Say what this. <laughs> Okay, I know, that's, uh, this is why this analogy is probably not going to work very well in the future. Okay, so here's a list of elements, in this case metals, and your top um, are those that are highly reactive, and as you go, as, as you go down, uh, it decreases in activity. Um, so, you know, gold does not react hardly with anything. So if I had a uh, lithium chloride and I decided to drop a gram of gold into lithium chloride, Very nothing's good. gonna happen because gold is at the bottom of the list, okay? But if I have, um, I don't know, iron chloride and I drop lithium into the mix, you know, lithium's higher on on the list than iron, so yeah, then they're gonna swap places and something's gonna happen. Notice that some halogens are also included. So these are, um, you know, 
group one, group two, and then some transition metals. And the halogens, there's, they added some group 17. So it's just a list of elements, usually metals. And the point of the list is to distinguish who can cut in and when. Um, so if the element on top can replace elements below it, then that reaction will occur. So if I have calcium and sodium, calcium's dancing with X, sodium wants to cut in. Can sodium cut in? Well, let's find calcium. Here's calcium. Here's sodium. Can sodium cut in? No, it cannot. Okay, since sodium is more of a wimp than calcium, it can't cut in. <coughs> However, sodium, and, so sodium's dancing with X and calcium decides to cut in. Well, calcium was higher than sodium, so yeah, now it's gonna cut in. And now calcium's with X. Um, it also tells you whether or not the reaction will be vigorous. So the higher up the element is, the more vigorous it will be. Who? Sure, just put them on my back table. Okay. Probably not. Thank you. Yep. All right, so I got zinc and copper. Who's the baddest metal on campus? Zinc, and who's the brat? Copper, in this case. So in your notes, you have magnesium is dipped into nickel to chloride. So let's find magnesium. Let me get my pen going here. Magnesium is right here. And then what was the other element? Nickel to chloride. So is magnesium going to cut in with nickel chloride? Yeah. Yes, because magnesium is by itself, and this is your A with X. Well, you know what? Let's, let's write out the chemical reaction because you're going to have to. So we have Mg plus Ni... Cl2, because nickel's got a plus 2 and chlorine's a minus 1. MgCl2. And then plus nickel all by itself. Singing the song. All by itself. It's going to come back to haunt me. All right, let's do another example. So we got lead, which is PB, is placed in a iron three nitrate solution. Why did I do that to myself? Is nitrate NO3? I'll double check. I know that. I always going to make it's NO3 minus one. Yes. So NO3. NO3 three. Yep, NO3 three. So put the NO3 in parentheses. And a little three there. So what a reaction. <laughs> okay, so we got lead and iron. So I'm gonna go back and find lead right here iron and iron. iron. So is I lead gonna cut in? No. No. So then you're like, what do I do? You write no reaction. <laughs> right. Lead is too low on the list. It can't cut in. Iron's the bigger, batter metal. He's the big bad boy. Stop. So it's zinc. That's all four. That's all four. Okay, zinc. <laughs> Copper two sulfate. So it's Cu sulfate. That's all four. That's all four. Yeah. It is SO four with a minus two. So the charges balance out. Yay. SO4. Oh, thanks. All right, so we got to find zinc and copper. Here's zinc. Here's copper. Copper's lower. Yep, so it budges. And it's balanced, so I'm not going to worry about that. Okay. So here's your lab. Okay, let me pass it out, and then I'm going to explain it. Yes, you're in groups. No groups. <laughs> 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 
Don't mess with me. I don't know. It's yeah, it's crispy chicken. That sounds good. I yeah. I think that's the one thing. Yeah. What? Don't care. Ah, the whole class. Whole class. Whole class. Whole class. Don't care. You just need data. Okay, so uh, what is the order of reactivity of metals, copper, iron, magnesium, and zinc in a single displacement reaction? So the materials, you're going to need a well plate, which is, I chose ceramic for safety. Small pieces of iron and copper and zinc, and then you'll need scissors to cut the magnesium into just tiny little strips. Um, you're going to need to wear goggles because you are going to mess around with hydrochloric acid. The yeah. Yes. Not so, again. Yes. Yes, again. <laughs> okay. So the procedure. Obviously, just take a look at the appearance of each metal. And then using your well plates, you are going to set up three wells. One row of water. So you just need four circles, but I would do them in a row of water. One row of your hydrochloric acid. And then go zinc, no zinc, zinc, zinc. And then what you're going to do is you're going to test how reactive <laughs> copper is to hydrogen, hy uh, hydrogen again, I guess, and zinc. And you're going to note whether or not a chemical reaction takes place. You'll do the same thing with zinc. That's why we don't have zinc chloride in this one, because zinc is not going to replace zinc. Uh, this is my magnesium, and then this is your iron. And you'll notice that in your table one, you're supposed to make observations. So if you see the presence of a chemical reaction, what are some things? Some bubbles. 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 Color change. Color change. Yeah. yeah. Odor. Yep. So you're looking for evidence of a chemical reaction. And if you see evidence of a chemical reaction, you're going to write R. Oh, shoot. It's not cold. My water is not cold. Mm, I hope it still works. Um, shoots. And if nothing happens, you're going to write NR. OK, so then you're going to move on. Second page, write a chemical reaction for each single replacement reaction that recorded. So if you wrote an R, then you need to write the chemical reaction for it. If it was a metal that displaced another metal, or if it was a metal that displaced hydrogen, or if it was, um, gosh darn it, I might just go get a bag of cold water here, or a cold, uh, a bag of ice. A bag of ice. And then you're going to, um, rank your metals from most reactive to least. Notice that it says rank the metals you test in an order of reactivity beginning with the most reactive metal. Include lithium in your ranking. Go back to question three. No, yep, question, question three. three for lab questions. Um, obviously lithium is probably going to be at the top of that because if you're not messing with it, it probably means it's highly reactive and dangerous, okay? Lab questions, it says lithium metal reacts with water. So then you need to answer these questions. Feel free to use an activity series um, in your book. I can put the slide back on. And then there's another question there. You just answer that. And then this back page is a series of letters telling you whether or not things got displaced or not. Um, and then you have to rank the letters from most reactive to least reactive, or the letters. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, so that's the lab in a nutshell. I'm sure you'll have lots of questions about it. Um, but, yeah, don't dump anything down the sink. We're just going to go trash can, and then we'll just douse it in water. So, like, yeah. <laughs>